today I am going to read a story with my with my cat again. Here you go. He's very playful. He plays so much. Okay. Oops. Over there. Yeah. There. Okay. Now, everyone listen carefully. Also you. Tida, okay? You also listen carefully. Listen carefully to the story. Okay, then let's start. No. Okay. So, I am going to read, read now book 5, chapter 5, page 31, the story of cane sugar. So, let's start. <laughs> Get out of the way, Tida. Don't do that. Okay. The rows stretch to the distant Jamaican hills. Tall green fronds spring from them canes towards the hot sun. There is a rustle like paper in the light breeze. These are the giant grasses of sugarcane. The sugarcane is a tropical plant and is grown wherever there is enough rain and enough sun. In Kenya, Central America, Brazil, India, the, Phil the Philippines, and Australia as well. As in the West Indies, you'll find it growing. It is one of the tallest of the grass family, and the canes often grow as tall as 4.5 meters. Quite high not as high as bamboo, which can reach 30.5 meters. If you have a look at any stalky piece of the grass, you will see that leaves are at the top piece of the grass. You will see the leaves are at the top. The stalk itself is hollow and rather stringy. If the grass is fresh, then there is juice or sap inside the stalk. The sugar cane is, of course, very large, but it is the sap inside the stalk or cane that interests the man. It is very sweet. Men have known about this plant for a long time. It was growing in India at least 3,000 years ago. Page 32. And the soldiers of Darius... A Persian emperor saw it when they reached the river Indus in 510 BC. There is a recipe from that time which talks of cane sugar. The recipe sounds suspiciously like rice pudding. Much later, sugar cane was grown in Persia and Arabs took it to Egypt. The word sugar is itself an Arabic word. All over the world, people use honey in those days for sweetening. Just as today, it was rather expensive. You can perhaps imagine how the crusaders greeted the sugar they found in the Middle East. Later, the Moors brought it in into southern Spain, where it still grows today. In 1493, Columbus, on his second voyage to the New World, took some Spanish seedling, seedlings with him to the West Indian Islands, and then called Santo Domingo. They grew splendidly for the climate, was just right. There was a great rush to the rich islands of the West Indies. Sugar was a luxury that men really wanted, and soon the lucky owner of a sugar plantation was a rich man. It was called by some white gold. Countries fought over the islands while pirates infested the shores in the hope, in the hope, of rich booty. These were wicked days with rum made from sugar being the favorite drink 
as readers of Treasure Island will know, these were also the days of slavery. Through the 17th and 18th centuries, the slave ships brought men and women from Africa to work on the plantations. Where's Tida gone? Oh. <sighs> well, uh, I guess he'll come back later. So let's see. Page 33. Sugar grows well in the West Indies, but still requires a lot of work in planting and harvesting. In the old days, the canes had to be cut by hand. The workers used a special knife about the length of a bayonet, but rather the shape of a bread knife, called a machete. Some of the harvesting is still done by hand, though now more and more machines are used. See that? Come over here. Come, come. Come over here. Look at this. Come. You need to listen carefully. So, some of the harvesting is still done by hand, though now more and more machines are used. Just when you mow the lawn, the grass grows again. So does the sugar cane after cutting. Remember the canes are full of sweet sap, so they must be taken very quickly to the factory. The sugar mill close to the plantations. Here, the long canes are first cut into small pieces and shredded. Tada, be quiet, I'm reading. Then they are crushed between heavy rollers to squeeze out all the juice. Nothing is wasted. Either the leafy tops can be used as animal food, while the leftover cane will fuel the boilers into which the juice is now fed. Or can go to make her and to or can go to make paper and board. The juice at this stage is brown and murky liquid, so it has to be cleaned. Some of the impurities settle at the bottom. Others are cleared by boiling and adding lime. Then it is boiled again. After a time, sugar crystals appear in the syrup, and these have to be separated. This is done in something rather like a giant spin dryer. As the huge drum speeds round, the syrup spins off and the sugar crystals remain. The end. Thank you guys. Where's Tida? Tida, you have to say bye bye. Where are you? Literally, where are you gone? Oh, I can't see you anywhere.